continue on with a series called 10. And we've been going through this series now for six weeks. Uh, last week, we talked about the fifth commandment, which is really to honor your parents. We shifted gears because the first and fourth commandment, first to fourth commandment, deals with our relationship with God. If we want to have a growing, a thriving relationship with God, we need to be able to apply and understand the first to fourth commandment. Last week, we shifted gears because now we're dealing with people. How in the Ten Commandments, the fifth and the tenth to the tenth commandment deals with how we relate with people. In the fifth commandment, obviously, is honor your parents. We need to have a, we want and need to have a growing and thriving relationship with our families. And it cannot thrive if we don't understand and apply the principle of how we honor them as children. So we talked about that. Tonight we'll talk about, we all know this, murder. The sin and the crime of murder. It's interesting, when the Lord gave the Ten Commandments, it wasn't a personal commandment. It was actually a national commandment. It was a commandment of God so that the Israelite nation can have a thriving nation. For a society to thrive, a nation should have a thriving relationship with God and with the society, with the community. And so the sixth commandment was all about you shall not commit murder. And, you know, murder, all of us are not, you know, when you talk about murder, it's, it's not something new to us. We're all familiar with this. When you look at the news, it's unfortunate that the crime rate, I hope, with the new upcoming administration will, will lo lower, will, will decrease. But we all know this. When you watch TV news or read the newspaper or fictional, we're all aware of this crime called murder. So we're not new to this. We're not naive when it comes to these things. We're familiar <laughs> with this. In fact, I was talking to a man one time, his favorite TV show now, which I'm not going to endorse. It's all about murder. And so whether it's fictional or reality, we all know this, the crime of murder. And the sixth commandment that the Lord gave to the Israelites and to us is to be able to apply this, you shall not murder. That means the Lord preserves the sanctity of life. Look at the person beside you. That person's life is valuable. Hindi yan parang USB that you can delete. Plug, I don't like the files, delete. It's not like just a contact in your Facebook that you can unfriend anytime. Life is valuable. That's what this, is, what this message is saying, that do not murder means the sanctity of life. It's important, it's valuable. Now give us a background here so that we won't be confused. And I know some of us have questions already. The Hebrew language has two words when it comes to taking away a life of a human being. Okay, There are two to three words that the Hebrew language uses when it comes to taking away the life of a human being or an animal. Give an example. The first word is harag. You don't have to remember this, just to give a context. Harag. The word harag in Hebrew is used to when a person kills an animal for sacrifice. Okay? They use the word harag. Or during wartime, because in the Bible, there's what you call wartime killing. David went to war, the Israelites went to war. So when they kill people, they use the word harag. So animal sacrifices, when they kill, of course, how will they eat if they don't kill an animal? So they kill an animal, they use the word harag. When they do wartime killings, it's harag. Or, whether you like it or not, cap capital punishment is in the Bible, death penalty. So when they use the word put to death that person, they use the word harag. That's why... The word murder is another separate word when it comes to Hebrew language and even in English. The word murder here is, it is deliberately taking the life of another human being, illegally and immorally. In Hebrew word, it's called rasak. Okay, you don't have to remember. Rasak is, I kill, I take the life of a human being illegally and immorally. The other word, the former, was harag. That's why how many of you here accidentally killed an insect already or a cockroach? Do you ever say, I murdered a cockroach? You say, killed a cockroach because that's the word harag. When people or cri criminals are put to death because in the Bible, there was such a thing as death penalty in Israel to propagate the justice of God. They don't use the word murder. They use the word kill, harag. Or let's say, give an example. In our case today, a thief comes into your house tries to break in and steal something from you, and you kill that person, was it murder or harag? Kill. It's harag. 
So I'm not saying when you say do not murder, you're not doing anything even if your wife and your children are always already being harmed. Do not murder the way. Do not murder. No, it's not. It's harag. It's the killing, taking away the life of a human being or an animal. The word murder is this. Rasak is deliberately taking the life of another human being illegally and immorally. I remember one time I killed a cockroach. How many of you have killed a cockroach? One time in my room, I turned on the lights at nighttime. I was shocked. The moment I turned on, there was a cockroach coming towards me. Wow, what an aggressive cockroach. <laughs> and I was feared. I was scared. I was I, 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 was, I got startled, so I jumped like Keanu Reeves in Matrix, you know, boom, to evade that cockroach, but it was still running. But I'm not like Michael Jordan and LeBron James who jumps high. I landed, but before, I, was, I, didn't, I wasn't wearing any slippers, but the cockroach was still towards me, coming towards me, and then before I landed with my bare foot, <laughs> oh man. I start to hear the sound. <laughs> Have you ever stepped on a cockroach with your bare foot? With your hand. <laughs> and so I accidentally harag. <laughs> harag that killed that cockroach. And I still remember because when I stepped on it, it wasn't just the sound, the spike. Oops. I know you just had dinner. You're going to have dinner later. So. So anyway, why did I share that? But it's killing. It's killing or wartime killing, capital punishment. This is the category, haram. But what the Bible was saying is do not murder. You, don't, you just don't take the life of a human being randomly or just because you're sick in the head or you do it illegally or immorally. Then they, this is rasak. That is what they're saying. So I hope that's clear to us. Huh, hey, pastor, then we have nothing to talk about. I will not murder someone for sure. So how can I relate to this? How can we all relate to this if it's just all about this meaning? Do not murder. Well, I hope we have nothing to talk about tonight. But Jesus expanded this sixth commandment. What does it really mean not to murder? And this is what Jesus said years after. Kasi po, Exodus yan. So 4,000, maybe 5,000 years after Jesus comes, Recodes what God said in Exodus, what He said in Exodus, and then He explains it to us, expands the point so that all of us can relate of what it is to commit the sin of murder. This is what He said, Matthew 5, 21. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder. Okay, Rasak, you shall not. And whoever murders will be liable to judgment. That's the case. The, the literal meaning of do not murder is I do not take away the life of another human being. But this is what he said next. But I say to you that everyone who is angry. How many of you here you get angry from time to time? Okay, the others are perfect. <laughs> All of us. But he said with his brother will be liable to God's judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, because of the anger brewing in his heart, and it develops into hatred. And hatred leads to suffering. Yoda said, oh, parang si Yoda, no? When it develops and it brews in your heart, then you're already committing the sin of murder. That's what Jesus said. Mas mahirap pa pala yung sinabi ni Jesus, eh. Okay na lang, magstay na tayo sa Exodus. How we wish we could have stayed in Exodus and applied that meaning, but Jesus had to expand it. And he raised the standard that murder is not just literally taking the life of another human being. Murder is letting anger develop into hatred and brew in your heart and you start to have bitterness and you start imagining that person. You're, you're starting imagining things like you're strangling that person. You're looking at the, the food, dinner. And then you imagine, how many of you did that already? You already imagine. Then that's murder. That's what Jesus was saying. I don't have to literally kill that person, but if I have hatred, anger, and bitterness, you know when if, you know when a person is bitter against another person. Even if you go to Paris and they see the Eiffel Tower, instead of the Eiffel Tower, they see they still see the face of that person. They're angry. Some of pe people who have been bitter have been bitter for years. 
give you a balance here, it's okay to get angry. Hello? Hindi ka tao if you don't get angry, no? It's like, if something happens, bad trip, like, if the warrior's lost, I mean, <laughs> you know, frustrating things happen in your office, for sure, and sometimes children disobey you, and you get angry. Someone cuts you, you're about to turn here in the AN building, and someone cuts you, siningitang ka pa sa gate, you know. You get angry. So all of us as human beings, we get angry. But what Jesus is saying here is this. You don't upgrade the anger. <laughs> because if you let anger develop into something that's worse, and you let it stay in your heart, like, it's okay to get angry at least 30 minutes, an hour, maximum a day. But if that anger is still brewing like a boiling pot, from Monday to Friday, and now Sunday has come, and you're still angry at that, my demonic boss, my, my, my intelligent staff, you know? You, then that's already something. That's what Jesus is saying. If you let it brew in your heart, you can do something. Like, yeah, you can say something negative. You fool. You start saying curses, or you might, it might lead you to something that you'll regret. Then that's already a sin of murder. When the anger develops into hatred, and then so on and so forth would lead you to sinful action. That's, Jesus expanded it. And now when we understand what Jesus is teaching about do not murder, then all of us can relate. Then all of us, it's a, there's a big possi- possibility that majority of us are actually murderers. Because sometimes we let anger develop into hatred, bitterness, rage, fury, and then it leads us to sin, think sinful things that we will regret. Here's the thing. What Jesus is saying is this. Murder is a fruit. Yeah, I take the life of another human being, but you don't have to wait there. It has a root. And if you allow those roots to grow in your heart and you're not doing anything about it, then you're already sinning against God. It's mahira pa pala sinabi ni Jesus. It's harder, but that's what it means now in our world today, do not murder. So how do we apply the sixth commandment? How can we do this? I'm, I'm sure majority of us haven't taken the life of another human being by the grace of God. But how do we apply it in our hearts when we allow roots, things in our hearts to brew and boil? And You don't have to wait there. You can already do something here. Because it all starts in the heart. And you may say, an adultery or an affair, it's not really the act of doing it with a person that you're not married to. But again, Jesus is going back. It's the heart. It all starts in the heart. It's hard. It starts with the thought. You don't, wala naman sa atin will say, I'm gonna commit adultery tomorrow morning. You plan it and put it in the calendar, you don't. Or some people will say, it just happened, Pastor. It's, it did happen. It just, what do you mean? It just happened. Yeah, I mean like, now you're in, a, in the room together, it just happened? I, I think you drove. And so there, but there was already something that's brewing in the heart. So Jesus had to go back and make sure our hearts are okay, are fixed. Because that's where it all starts. So how do we apply this? We talk about the sin and the crime of murder. Number one, what Jesus is saying is number one is to get rid. What are the things you need to get rid of so that we don't disobey and violate this sin and this crime of murder. Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 is the story of Cain. Kilala po naman natin si Cain, di ba? Cain and Abel, the two sons of Adam and Eve. And it's interesting, in Genesis 3, Adam and Eve sinned against God, and they were banished from the garden. Sin entered humankind. But the first consequence, one of the painful consequences when sin entered the world is this, the first murder. You know who the first murderer was? It was the son of Adam and Eve. So this is how destructive when we have a sinful heart and we do, we're not watchful of what's brewing in our hearts, it can lead us to commit the sin of murder. And that's what happened to Adam and Eve. And so the story is Cain and Abel. The younger brother was favored by God because he gives great and the best offerings to God and God is pleased. And Cain, the older brother, was kind of frustrated. We all get frustrated, right? Felt rejected. We all feel rejected. Because his offerings were substandard and the Lord wasn't accepting it. And so now he gets angry. 
different emotions now start to enter Cain's heart. Like what? Envy, jealousy. He feels rejected by God. And he starts comparing himself with his brother and then his younger brother is better than him. Probably there is an insecurity there. Rejection, shame, and all those sorts. He allowed these things to enter into his heart before he kills and murders Abel. So before, ito pa, wala pa yung murder scene. No murder has taken place yet in this verse, but the Lord was examining Cain. The Lord had to ask Cain, why are you angry? And why has your face fallen? Bitter people, you'll notice their countenance is different. You know, bitter people, sometimes they come here in church and they're welcome here to go to church and usher greets them, good evening, with a smile. The bitter people will say, Sinosha. <laughs> angry. The countenance is different. What God is saying, Sir, why are you angry? I think that's a good question to ask from that. We need to pause. When we get frustrated at things and at people, when we get stressed at work, I think it's good to pause. Or when you're driving, because I'm sure you drive cars, someone cuts you. You better make sure you're controlled. Baka naman iniisip pa yung driver up one week after. You might be thinking about that driver who cut you one week after. And then, but God was saying, why are you angry? It's good to ask from time to examine our hearts. O nga no? Dad, why are you hot-headed today? Mom, what's wrong? Sometimes you need to process it. And really find out, why, what, nga no? why, am I, why do I have bitterness? Why do I have anger? Why do, and so God was examining him. God is a very practical God. In verse 7, if you do well, God is saying, if you do well, will you not be accepted? If you give the best offerings, then will you not be accepted? And if you do not, sin is crouching at the door. It's desire for you, but you must rule over it. Alam mo sabi ni Lord, dito na at this time, God is telling Cain, bro, this hatred is growing exponentially in your heart. You already have a bitterness against your brother. And listen, sin is crouching at the door. It's like a snake, not the cockroach, but the snake that's crawling, coming towards you now. It's going to eat you alive. It's going to consume you if you allow these things to grow. So he's already... So kaya nga si Cain, it just didn't happen na pagtripan lang niya si... He, he, sarap patayin to. Cain didn't do that. No, it, there was a process. There was something that's growing in his heart. He did not do something about it. That snake called sin was already crawling. He should have cut off its head and kicked it out. He didn't do anything about it. And how many of us are like that? We, we allow this rage, this bitterness to grow in our hearts until we get to have heart attack. Until we get stressed. And I think until the time we, don't, we can't sleep anymore. That's why, how do we apply this? We get rid. By the grace of God, we can get rid of this. You ever watch Lord of the Rings? I am one of my favorite characters, Gollum. He was so consumed by the ring. My precious, I'm not judging. He talks to himself. I'm gonna kill. I hope I don't look like him. I just sound like him. <laughs> he was so consumed with this ring, and a lot of us are like that when we don't, when we allow the root of murder to grow in our hearts. My precious. We get so consumed with hate and anger. Get rid. Get rid. What God is saying, Alam mo sabi ni Lord dito, if you do not do well, your, your sacrifice will it not be accepted if you do well. What God is saying in short, look to me. You're angry, then look to me. Present your case to me. Why do you have to Kim Kim? <laughs> and the problem with us, we make Kim Kim, right? We keep it. We suppress it. No, God is there as a perfect judge. Why not pour it out? You know, and I get frustrated that my friends, <laughs> even with my wife at times, she's not here. <laughs> and when she's frustrated at me, sometimes, Lord, I'm tired. Hindi naman kunin mo siya. Change your heart. 
change me. And so why not do that? Present your case before God. I'm sure He will help you instead of keeping it until there's, it's affecting your health and it's affecting all your spiritual, spiritual relationship with God. Remember this cartoon, Lucy and Linus, Peanut, you know that, Charlie Brown. <laughs> One time, uh, the younger brother, Linus, closer to the TV, was watching in the living room and then Lucy enters the living room and then Lucy said, change the channel, I want my channel, being the older sister. And then Linus said, hey, what makes you think you, just can, you can just come here and tell me what to do? And you know, sabi ni Lucy, di ba? Nilagay niya yung, he made, she made the gesture, talk, spoke to Linus in front of Linus and said, you see these fingers? These fingers, individually, they're nothing. But when I curl them together like this into a single fist, they form a weapon that is terrible to behold. Of course, the younger brother was bullied and said, okay, then what channel do you want? He walks out of the living room and then Linus looks at his hands. Why can't you get organized like that? <laughs> Sometimes we get, that's a bully. But Lucy, God just got angry and loses his patient, her patience when things don't get and fall into place. And we need to watch out for that. Get rid of these emotions. Get rid of these things. Ephesians 4.31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. What's bitterness? It's an upgraded anger. All of us get angry. Righteous indignation. Did Jesus get angry when he was a human being? Yes, he did. Remember, he turned the tables in the temple, but he didn't upgrade the anger. It was still a controlled anger. If he was God and he lost his patience, he could have sent thunder and lightning to these people and they're all dead. When he was suffering on the cross, was there anger? No, there wasn't anger. Kaya nga nagpray siya, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do, they're doing. So, Jesus gets angry, emotional, when he, when he was a human being for sure, but it was a controlled anger and it's all rooted from his love for God and love for people. So, here's the thing. We can all get angry at times. You can get all, you can get angry this week for sure. But make sure it doesn't get upgraded into bitterness, into wrath, and you become like a lion. You know what a wrath is? You know what wrath? It's like fury. Sabi ng theologian. One theologian said, wrath, anger, and bitterness, it's like a, an intoxicating alcohol. Intoxicating wine. It brooms. So, we got to be careful with that. I was talking to someone here in church. I did a memorial service two weeks ago, and I was talking to someone, a lady who attended the, the service, and I just asked her. She's a widow. And then I asked her, because what happened to her, the reason why she became a widow one and a half years ago is because tragic death, her husband was beside her in the car and was shot dead. It's called murder. That was murder. And so, of course, one and a half years have passed. NBI is looking, investigating it. And so they have some leads. So I asked her about the status, what's happening. And she get, tells me the story. But you know, this is what, she, what I was amazed at is when she gave me and she was telling me the story and how she's feeling now. Because she said, you know, Pastor, the NBI is, they have some leads and they're pursuing the case. Okay, that's good, I said. But you know what she said? But you know, Pastor, I'm also at peace. I know we haven't found the killer yet, but I'm leaving it to God. I'm very careful, Pastor. I'm very careful that there will be no rage and bitterness and hatred in my heart. That's why I'm leaving it up to God. That's why I'm at peace. You know, Pastor, if you talk to me three months, first three months after when this happened, you wouldn't... I wouldn't share it to you. I'm still angry. But by the grace of God, I was able to move on because I know God is a God of justice. I'm trusting God. I'm trusting the government. But as far as I'm concerned personally, I don't want to have a grudge that's growing in my heart that will consume me. <laughs> and I was talking to her. Like, wow. I was imagining myself, if that happened to me, I don't think I'll be able to move on like how you did. 
but she was able to move on. And how about us? I mean, her situation is far different from the majority of us when we get offended just because someone forgot to greet our birthday. We just get offended because someone backstabbed you. You just get offended because these things happen, so blah, etc., etc. But look at her. That was not a major offense. That was a major crime, major injustice. But look at her, the grace of God, she was able to move on. And some of us here, we can learn from her. We can get rid of this by His grace. Number two is not just get rid, but get right. That means we reconcile. It's not just letting go of that bitterness and anger. Jesus said, as we continue in Matthew 5, 23, He said, So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, let's say you offended that person, or vice versa, He said, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. What God is saying here is the principle of worship. It's Worship becomes more fruitful. Drawing near to God becomes more fruitful. If we know we've been reconciled to the people we've hated or the people who hated us. I think mas gumagaan. The load becomes lighter on our shoulders when we know we've forgiven those people and we've experienced reconciliation with the people we offended or the people who offended us. That's what God is saying. It's not like you're not welcome in church. No, you can come to church, but you know, sometimes it's hard while you're looking at the PowerPoint and singing and praising to God. You still get reminded of that person uh, you offended. I'm sure that happens. It bothers you. It's distracting. It's true. But Jesus is saying it will benefit you more. Worship becomes more meaningful and fruitful when we're able to release forgiveness and offer reconciliation to the brother or to the sister that you've offended, and vice versa. I've offended a lot of people, unfortunately, the last 35 years. People already offended me also. So the last 35 years, there were unintentional offense, maybe my reckless words in my preaching and Unfortunately, one person got offended. I had to apologize. Or second one is probably because alas kadoro ko dante. Hindi ko mamiko ng tao. Mik kilala kayong ganon. You know someone like that. I tease a lot and mock, so I've had to grow and improve on that. And <laughs> I've offended a lot of people. Some usually when I I'm reckless with my words and I've offended my wife. She has offended me. So we've I've offended a lot of people. So a lot of us are not naive when it comes to these things. But there was one recently that I really offended. There was a brother, a friend of mine I've offended. This friend of mine was very instrumental, helped me grow in my relationship with God. And of course, the church was growing, and so we got so busy. I have started making new friends, and she started making new friends. So, you know, it's not intentional. It's really just the church was growing, and ministry was busy, become, got busier. So we kind of distant, became distant. We're no longer close, but we're still friends when we see each other. But there was a time in his life when he faced a major crisis in his family. He was really down. And he was actually expecting me and some of us to, in a way, encourage him and text him, call him, kamustahin man siya kahit papano. But he didn't feel and hear anything from me. Am I bad? Because I felt that he already had friends who were helping him there, and it just seemed like I got so busy, and I didn't know how to respond. It, I don't know if, if I comfort him, he'll respond as well. So he, anyway, that was my bad, and, but I didn't know. He got offended. It, so it's just one of our common friends who fi- told me, Patrick, you offended him. I mean, really? I didn't know. What should I do? My pride and my human nature will tell me, insensitive niya, ha? Pushong mamon. I mean, I'm sure he has a lot of friends, spiritual family here in Victory. We have a lot of people. There are, he, has a, he knows a lot of people. So, my pride was telling me, drama king. It's not my fault. 
My pride will tell me. But then the Lord had told me, hey, listen, Patrick, you remember your friend, that friend, he even went to your father's wake when you were mourning. I wouldn't be here speaking in front of you without his influence in my life. And so the Lord had to remind me of these things. Wow. And then I started to remember, oh, wow, I, I need to apologize. I had to let, down, let go of my pride and say, yeah, okay, I'm sorry, I was ignorant. It's my fault. I just need to apologize. And that's what I did. I asked, my, uh, I asked help from Carla, my girlfriend back then, can you help, can you help me write a personal message? Uh, sometimes I'm very weak in diplomacy and tactfulness. So he, she helped me there, and I had to apologize and say, listen, for the first paragraph I said, I'm thankful for all the things you did. I cherish all the memories we've had, even though you are, you're in other church, and I'm thankful for that. So there was gratefulness, and then I just had to say, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't know what to say when you were going through that crisis. And then I hope, and I said, I hope we're still friends. I still consider you as my friend. So I sent in Facebook personal message. You know, when you send a personal message, what happens? There's a check, right? So I was waiting 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, two hours. It's still checked. He ignored me. Then the next day I check, it says, still check. And then two days after, it's seen. Oh, seen na, progress. There's progress, seen zone. And some of you singles are frustrated, right? When you want to court a girl, it's always seen zone. It doesn't respond. But then he replies after like three days. And then he says, he replies and says, I've, it's okay, I've forgiven you. Thank you. It means a lot. The moment I, I saw the reply and response, I felt like by the grace of God, there was reconciliation. Now when we see each other, very rarely, still very rare, in parties and events, we see each other, it's normal. It's nothing like, as if nothing happened. And then now, I, f- I know that he no longer has a grudge against me, and I, no longer ha- I don't have a grudge against him for sure, but then it makes it lighter serving God and ministering to people, knowing that there has been a reconciliation in that relationship. That's what Jesus is saying, and I'm believing for some of you, we can believe God for reconciliation. Not wala namang mawala sa eh. Because sometimes people's reasoning is, ay hindi, pastor. He wronged me. My dignity. What did he do? Ano ba niya? Well, he just gave a negative comment in Facebook. Because I was voting for that person, I was voting for this. Okay, wow, what a crime. Wait, you compare that to the widow I was talking to. No, it's, as Christians, we're secure in the Lord. If you have a relationship with God, you're secure in the Lord. Your identity will not be devalued. Your, your significance is high because you have a relationship with Jesus. So what's at stake when you seek reconciliation? Now, you already asked for forgiveness and the person is still mad. That's fine. No problem. It's no longer your problem. That means you followed God already. That's what it means to get right, so that we will not commit the sin of murder. And we can't do get rid, and we cannot do getting right with the people if we don't get redeemed. Because at the end of the day, it's the power of God that will enable you to be able to do the things you need to do. Titus 2.11, it says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people. It's the grace of God. When you say redemption, God, Jesus' death, was actually a payment so that you can be rescued from a sinful state and put into a righteous state. That's why if you, you can't get, you, you will still keep on violating the sixth commandment without Jesus because it's the grace of God that changes you and me. You know, I was talking to the widow who was able to forgive. It's the grace of God because he, she has a relationship with Jesus. And then it says, the grace of God empowers and trains us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live what? Self-controlled lives. So when there's anger, you can control it. 
upright and godly lives in this present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to what? To redeem us from all sin and lawlessness and purify us for his possession, who are zealous for good works. Wow. Wow. It's the grace of God. You know the difference between other religions and Christianity? Other religions are moralistic. You do this, you do that. Uh, you pray X number of times a day and forgive. You can't do that. Moralistic, moralism will always push us to failure. You know what will push us to success? It's the grace of God. He changes you. Not the outward first, the inside, the heart fixes that. It will translate gradually into the externals. That's what it means for us to apply this sixth commandment. You get rid of the bitterness. You seek reconciliation. You get right. But it can only happen when you get right with God. And you have Jesus in your life who will fix your heart. I'm going to end with this story. And a few years ago, I'm sure you know, you're know you familiar with this. A girl lost his, her temper one time in an, L, L, an LRT station. She felt she was mistreated by the guard. That's the context. And so she lost her patience. She lost her temper. She started speaking insults to the guard and raising her voice and arguing in the garden. This is what you did to me with anger brewing and the impatience was there. Little did she know that there was a video. Someone was actually videoing her of how she treated the guard. And little did she know that after a few minutes, an hour, the video was uploaded in the internet, became viral. So from that anger and her failure of not of losing her temper, she was bullied in the internet. A lot of netizens and reacted, gave her hate comments and tweeted her and all those personal things. They started bashing, saying negative words against her. And you know what I'm talking about? She's the I'm a liar. I'm a liar video. And she didn't know what to do. There was tons of rejection. Wow, I'm a failure. How can I continue? She was about to graduate, but she was discouraged. She talked to her dad. She was crying. I, I made a mistake. But can, can I still live here in the Philippines? She was afraid already. And then one time she was browsing all the tweets, all the hate comments, a lot of hate comments. Probably some of you gave those hate comments. I hope not. <laughs> but there was while she was browsing through those tweets she saw one tweet that said it's okay it's not the end of the world I'm praying for you of all the many hate comments that she received there was one two encouraging comments and those people still extended grace Yes, she got angry, she got bitter, but someone extended grace. When that person extended grace, it totally changed her heart. In fact, she was able to connect and that person invited her to a Christian church. When she attended a Christian church, she was just crying and crying and crying because in spite of her failure, in spite of her mistake, and in spite of all the rejection and the hate comments that she received from people, there was a community that was willing to accept. In fact, it's how she described it. When she entered that congregation, she felt, she felt safe. She felt secure. And then she surrenders her life to Jesus. You know, she got redeemed by Jesus. She got saved by Jesus because of one person who extended grace, acceptance, and love to her. In fact, she shares a third testimony in 700 Club and one interviewer said, what will you say now to that security guard and the person who showed that video? Well, of course, she was apologetic to the security guard, but what she said 
also is I want to say thank you to the Lord for allowing this situation because if not in this situation I will not have gotten to know Him and because of a Christian who showed grace to her from I'm a liar now I'm a living for Jesus <laughs> she's living for Jesus she's a disciple and she keeps on sharing her testimony to people isn't God good? I mean He can turn around things God's good in fact, think about your lives. How many times did you get mad? Did you get angry? And God was still there and turning things around. That's why, alabo, let's be careful whenever we see things in the internet where, you know, I'm sure there were people already, you know what I'm talking about, who got mad at the MMDA and someone who got mad at the driver and we start giving hate comments. Ay, nako, go to hell, no? Don't say that. You'll never know who, who you'll never know who you will encounter in church. Probably next week that guy will be there beside you. What will you do? Praise the Lord. Yeah, last week lang binigay mong negative comment. My point is this: let us not let us be careful in giving judgments to people. We always extend grace and love and mercy to people, just like what Jesus did to us. Amen. And we can turn things around but because of His grace and He will use us. Are you thankful for the grace of God? Amen. Give God praise. Amen. Wow. Let's all stand. Think about, think about my life of all the many mistakes I've made. How many people have imagined murdering? Mm. Got angry. A lot of times. I raised my voice. I said negative words before and I got angry but I'm thankful because of the grace of God I can I can let go of these things and just make me into a new creation that's my prayer for us the Lord will make you into a new creation always I know we fail I know we fail we fail from time to time my encouragement for I'm not here to judge you and put, down, put you down I'm here to inspire you listen friends it's the grace of God some of you have bitterness and anger against someone. Some of you are still mad at your ex-boyfriend, I'm sure. Ex-girlfriend. At your parents. At your friends. At your business partners. Let us move on. And we can only move on by the grace of God. Lord, I pray that this word will ring in our hearts this week. Replace our hearts from a heart that's pride heart that's always angry, a heart that's bitter, sometimes a heart that's unforgiving. Replace it with a heart that's willing to extend grace. Replace it with a heart that's willing to forgive. Replace it to a heart that's willing to let go and trust you that you're the one who will repay. So I just pray, Lord, for some of us who are believing for reconciliation of relationships, you would give that to us. Give them opportunities where they can get reconciled. If that's you, can you lift both your hands? I want to pray for you. For people here, for my friends here, for my brothers and sisters in Christ who are believing for reconciliation, I pray that you would give that to them. Let the pride in our hearts melt. Let it melt by your grace and we can reconcile so that Lord gumaan ga naman yung karga karga namin so I pray for them you can put your hands down if, for another group of people before we get dismissed if you're here and you're believing Lord I want to forgive give me, the, give me the strength to forgive there's this bitterness that I've been brewing not weeks not months but years help me forgive if that's you just raise your hands I want to pray for you Lord I pray for grace for my brothers and sisters. Let your grace manifest. Let it grow. Let the pain be removed. The painful and traumatic memories be deleted in our memories. And may you fill it with good things that can only come from your grace and from your word. So just pray for us even right now. We'll be able to apply this commandment. We will not murder. We will have a thriving relationship with everyone. So you will prepare that person as well as we approach them and seek reconciliation. That's our prayer today. Can we lift our hands to God? I pray a prayer of blessing for us. Lord, bless our week this week. 
May your righteousness, your peace, your joy be with us. May your face shine upon us and be gracious to us. And may you give us peace. Thank you, Lord. Bless our week. We glorify you. And may you be honored through the way we live our lives. We love you, Lord. Protect us as we go home. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.